welcome to Outlander's Guide to Ladaria session 30! Oh, oh my goodness, session 30. We've come so far. I'm it's glad. older than I am. Uh, oh crap. I'm about to be 30. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> ah. Okay, don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. <laughs> but yeah, Very hi. Let me switch back to the screen, and here we are. I hope you all, you've all had a, as good of a week as we could have had <laughs> in this world. Uh, today is the um, existential dread session. Um, and yeah, why don't we start right away with today's summary, today's recap, which is going to come from... Da -da 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 -da. I'm spinning my camera around. What? <laughs> I, oh, okay. I I invoke the power of everyone here. I wrote a script, uh, and all of us players have have roles to play. <laughs> Probably should have opened this ahead of time. Please, please go to the recap place where you can look at the script. Dips on the inspiration, guys. Okay. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I will be playing the character of Pip. Talix will be playing. I mean, Jason will be playing <laughs> the, the character of Talix. Uh, and then everyone else is going to be playing the parts of the, the haunted talking dolls that we just got. <laughs> as we sit around talking by the campfire. <clears throat> My army of talking dolls <laughs> and Talix. Welcome to our board meeting. <clears throat> I've gathered you all here to discuss all that has happened and to get an idea of where we're going next. Uh, let's first all introduce ourselves. I'm Pip, I have a drinking problem, and I like rocks. Uh, oh, me next. Right. I'm Talix Moyer. I guess you would call me an anthropologist and an anthropologist and an archaeologist and an archaeologist, <laughs> archaeologist <laughs> and a parkeologist. And uh, who's next? Hello, I'm Eleanor. So very pleased to make your acquaintance. I'm a dress-up doll, but I haven't had my clothes changed in some thirty-five years. <laughs> Maybe you could help me out, Mr. Moyer. Oh my! <laughs> uh, my my name is Joey. I I wasn't always like this. I I used to be a real boy, but then I died, and now my soul is inhabiting this puppet. <laughs> I I feel so cold and empty all the time. <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> <clears throat> Bear your souls and weep, mortals. The age of Mordecai is a pale is upon you. <laughs> Those who take up my porcelain body are cursed for eternity. Cursed to expel all sanguine ichor from their corporeal... Corporeal? God damn it. <laughs> just just power through it. Cursed to walk as a lifeless husk among the living until the sun blanches their withered skin. And I will laugh as your cursed corpse becomes dust. Oh, I have removed curse. Oh, you're fine, Zep. So, I got my new, my new list from Granny. It's a lot longer than my first list, but at least I've got people who can help me. We've just got to get past the peninsula in order to get any of them. I greatly look forward to the pod where you have to rip the still beating heart out of the lover's rip. Oh, oh, no. You can rip my heart out if you like, Mr. Moira. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, uh, anyway, we're headed downstairs, and Kailu, <laughs> Kailu presented us with with reward money for having saved the city. Each of us received 300 gold, which we wasted no time spending. We got some supplies, potions, kits, rations. I purchased Duchess from Duchess the Majestic Horse. Tekka got a metal bracelet, metal bracket for something. I got a hat that can make real animals. Uh, and you got us from the same stall. That, that creepy lady in the alley you got us from is, is the one responsible for putting my soul in that doll. Uh, please, you have to free me. Mm. 
Then, Brooke told the Phantoms to hold Saskarin for a month or so until we got back to town uh, for that wizard competition thing Pontifex wants to go to. And he also let them know to be on the lookout for Fortis. I hope he's okay. He has probably been eviscerated and disemboweled, disemboweled by that Krelko. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe Brooke's phantom friend Casimir ate him. Uh, Duchess was afraid he might eat her after all. He's joining us on the journey now to help us fight the machine called The One Who Stares at Sentinel's Watch. Something else like Glimmer. Oh, yeah. We ran into her pretty shortly after we left town. That double crosser, she's trading with our enemy, that Orm Tinhart. Well, we don't know if she's trading with Tinhart specifically. Just that she saw her metal scraps and said friend, and mentioned that she traded with some sort of metal furry man. I think it's much more likely she's been trading with one of Tinhart's creations. Perhaps even the one who stares itself. Or Tinhart is a furry. We did still trade with Glimmer, though, and saw some interesting stuff, like a world point card belonging to some monster hunter Ezin that we didn't get. Uh, oh, I uh, got a new fancy set of lockpicking tools, uh, uh, and the bells that let people talk with each other from long distances. Uh, uh, oh, that, that's great! Um, so, c can you release my soul from this puppet now? Well, good night, everybody. Sleep tight. <laughs> Don't let the Casimir bide. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, I'm stuck here forever, traumatizing. Jay. Thanks. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Austin, for that script. Uh, here's your doll inspiration. Doll inspiration. Doll. Nice. Doll. Uh, doll. Doll inspiration. <laughs> I don't deserve the extra <laughs> <clears throat> Um, okay, well, I already have tears in my eyes, and we've, we're just like 10 minutes in. It was very <laughs> emotional. It was very emotional. Uh, very emotional, Mr. Moira. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who programmed it to say that? <laughs> Which one would be weirder? It's <laughs> whistling in the background. <laughs> <laughs> or Talix did it himself. I have an outdated <laughs> sense of humor. <laughs> Very outdated. Uh, before we... The rest of you? Before we continue where we left off, we're going to um, rewind time just a tiny little bit to handle this, this rumor. Oh, that... Uh, <laughs> Metallics has found. Um, so this would have happened on the morning when, uh, like, right before leaving the colony of Simlianon, uh, and you would have come. Uh, you would have come across an um, an elf at the dragon wagon, just another person, just having uh, another drink, but. Uh, um, uh, he he was in the company of another one, and the two of them were talking, and that's how you got to overhear something about uh, um, a person. They, they described in particular the color of her skin and how they weren't really sure what what humanoid race she was supposed to be. And uh, um, Talix, you were the one who, hearing this, you ended up approaching them and just hearing a little bit more uh, about this encounter, which supposedly, here, take the car back uh, into your hand. Supposedly, it took place uh, uh, just a little bit south of Simlielon, on the road that connects uh, that colony uh, to Urca. Uh, so, roughly in this location, um, where the elves uh, um, explained that they were on the way back from uh, an, um, an, an excavation that's taking place further south, further down the road, uh, um, from that particular spot, but it were, as they were on the way back, uh, it was during night when they, um, w one of them was uh, awake on watch, and they um, spotted this woman who seemed to like, not have any particular business with them, just to be passing through. And as soon as she noticed any movement, she ran. 
Uh, but the two of them are the ones who saw her clearly and are utterly confused by um, her unusual appearance. Neither of them seems to even know what a drow uh, is in the first place. And that's all the okay. information that uh, uh, you can get from this rumor. Cool. Uh, okay. Now, last we left off, I think I have sucked in all of your minis into the campsite. Yeah, there they are. Um, was there anything that you guys needed to talk about around the campfire before we continue? Okay. I had a where's Pip moment, and I, and I remember I'm up here. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Uh, Why am I already asleep? <laughs> Some of you are just very tired. All right. True. During the night. Uh, it's at some point between uh, the first and the second shift uh, when Pip, Talix, and Squeak um, are ready for sleep and they wake Brooke up. And it's uh, roughly around the point as you're like um, waking him up and just looking around and making sure that everything is okay. That you, that you notice uh, that one of you is missing, uh, specifically the Tressim. <gasps> <laughs> Wait, so who, who notices this? Yeah, the, all of you, all four of you. The uh, Piptalic, Squeak, and Brook. Oh. Oh, I, mean... <laughs> I wonder where that cut's gone off to. Uh, does it matter? Let that thing get as far away as possible. I don't care. She could be lurking around in the corner. You're sleeping, Pontiac. <laughs> he whispers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I can try and call out to her. Yeah, but... <laughs> no, no, okay. That's no, not necessary. <laughs> You know, I think she just kind of does her own thing anyways. Uh, she's probably fine. I mean, it's we a can cat, talk to the professor right? about it in the morning. Yeah, aren't they a bit more night, night active? Or is that not as... Uh, sure. Probably. They probably work the same as other cats without wings. Yeah, I I haven't heard her say anything back, so I guess she's either far away or doesn't really want to be found. Hmm. I mean, if the professor wants to find her, he can at any time, right? That's how it works. Well, I mean, I don't know. the The professor's really hmm. smart, but he doesn't really know how to use this spell. Well. Hmm. All right, I mean, we'll take care of the cat tomorrow. If you want to sleep, I can look around. Enough. I can take a quick look around for uh, for feathers or something. Feathers or fur, or there might not necessarily be any tracks. This is tough. Talix is just going to take a quick look around and see if he notices anything obvious. Sure, uh, Talix can roll a survival survival check. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. All right, it's been a while. Uh, the cat was off to TV. a good start. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Talix poking around. Uh, uh, you just circle the entire the entire little camp, uh, uh, trying to find any trace of the cat. Uh, you're pretty sure that uh, she was sleeping um, on the opposite side of the camp compared to Pontifex near Tekka. <clears throat> and uh, as you check up that area in particular, you find a single feather. 
um, just a bit further away from where you are. Um, based on the fact that there aren't uh, uh, more of them, you don't think that she got into some kind of trouble. Um, it doesn't feel like she might have got into a fight or dragged off by a, by a bigger animal. <clears throat> Uh, but the absence of tracks on the ground do, does mean that uh, she flew off somewhere on her own. Oh. I'm pretty sure she just flew off. Mm. It's okay, she will come back if she wants to, right? And at worst, Pondervex didn't seem too happy with her anyway, so... No. Uh... We'll just have to see. Anyways, who who's watches it right now? I'm confused. Am I going to sleep or? Yeah, you're going to sleep. <laughs> Alec, that's okay. been a long day. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> um. Hmm? What? Oh, I thought you were about to say something. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> who are you talking to? Pip? What? Huh? <laughs> oh, I was. I was just dreaming. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Keep on then. <laughs> the rest of the night uh, is uneventful. <clears throat> when you're waking up for your for your final shift at Pontifex, you are informed uh, um, of the absence of the Tresim, uh, who does not show up for for um, for the rest of the night until all of you are awake. Sure. It yeah. is a cat. She comes and goes as uh, she pleases. We got a Tasmi also gets to have a. Mm? Talix is keeping that feather. Mm. Okay, Kazumi gets to have a watch too. So from next night onward, uh, he can also keep watch alongside one of you. Um, nice. He can keep watch with Brooke, I guess. Nice. <coughs> Okay, it's now in my notes. <clears throat> and uh, uh, take take back your minis. As you are now down one party member, uh, you're ready to continue. Wait, where's... I got it. Where's Duchess? Oh. I saved her. <laughs> I like how you took your time in case it could get sucked up. Wow, I was really struggling with uh, <laughs> finding this button to pack up the camp. Here's the map of the peninsula again. Um, as it's around uh, the third day of travel, uh, towards the middle of the afternoon, when you finally begin to uh, find a change in the terrain all around you, uh, as the hills flatten a little bit uh, and uh, vegetation begins to become a little bit more, a little bit more thick, the terrain also becomes a little bit more muddy, and you you find yourselves occasionally um, as the sky uh, is is clouded for most of the day, and uh, uh, there is uh, moments, just minutes at a time, when a very very light rain uh, falls upon you. Uh, during this time, the uh. Etrasim <laughs> does not uh, uh, show herself, um, and there comes a moment when. The sudden amount of vegetation, um, it, it, it's almost like a wall ahead of you, uh, where trees and thick, thick bushes uh, block your way. And uh, um, the, it's, it's to a degree that you can't really see an obvious way in. Um, and Casimir just recommends uh, uh, hacking your way through. All right. Um, I mean, well, wait, so, sorry, I got a little... 
Oh, you're fine. Something, You've reached the edge happen. of the jungle. So, as far as we can see, there's no feasible way in? There, there's no path anywhere? Not from where you are, but you could, if you wanted to, you could spend some time just walking around looking for a way in. I mean, if we... If we have to hack our way through the whole way, it's going to be very, very slow going. And loud. It's so it's such a stark change here. Uh, I'd rather get a bit more information about the land before we just head straight in, don't you think? <clears throat> oh, Kazumi just shrugs. You're the boss. No, I'm, I'm putting it to everyone else. Yeah, you're the one riding the horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be hard for Duchess to get through if we have to hack through it. Oh, I saw... Didn't we say last time, or did... Didn't someone mention that it's not possible for her to be in the jungle anyways? Yeah. Right? So maybe really find sure. like a place for you to leave her, and while we do that, look for a way in. Because obviously the uh, normal ways in, if someone is waiting inside for us, are probably being watched, or there's at least a chance of that. But we would save energy and strength if we don't come. Um... Where are you comfortable comfortable leaving her? Place we can find again. Well Which, I mean if we're just blindly walking through the through the woods, we might get lost. Um can we like right along the edge of this wall like Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can either pick north or south. So where are we right now on this map? You should be roughly around this area. Okay. Um. Uh, Tekka will start looking for a tree with sturdy branches and climb it. Okay, um, I will ask for an athletics check for climbing it. Finding one is going to be uh, easy enough. There's plenty of candidates, and you just end up picking the one that's uh, more easy to reach, where there just aren't too many other plants on the way to it. And you make your way up with ease. Uh, you've done this plenty of times as a kid uh, growing up, uh, and you're you you feel pretty um, you feel pretty comfortable with this particular tree. The branches are are sturdy, they're thick, they hold your weight with ease, and you climb up and up about twenty feet, twenty five, thirty. <clears throat> the, the rest of the group beneath you is starting to look smaller and smaller, and uh, um. You reach a point where you can see um, further into the jungle. It's not the top of its canopy. Uh, that's even way further ahead of you, but it, it, it sort of slopes a little bit. So you're at the lowest part of it, and you can see um, with these into the jungle. You can see that the, uh, the bottom, the floor of the jungle, um, about 20... Uh, no about uh, uh, 50 or 60 feet uh, further in. It's actually quite, uh, um, it's quite clear. Um, it's quite empty, especially for, uh, for other forests that, we, that you've seen before. Uh, but it seems like the further you go in, the less sunlight actually reaches the ground and the less things grow. There, it's just, the ground is just covered by, um, mainly by leaves. Was there anything else you wanted to know? Uh, no, that's probably. Uh, I guess, like, if there's any sort of like animal paths in in the first few feet of dense. Uh, from where you are. Uh, mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, I don't have this open. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, from where you are, you can see an easier path in. Uh, that would still require a little bit of work, but maybe maybe just five minutes uh, of uh, uh, clearing plants in order to, to get the horse through. But beyond that point, uh, um, even though uh, calling it a path uh, is a bit of a stretch, but the, it everything is clear enough for a horse to easily move through. Hmm. Five minutes walking that way. A clearer path. It should be open further inside. And he's pointing into the into the jungle saying this right. Five minutes in, not north or south, right? Is that do I understand that right? Uh, well, the DM said that uh, a five minutes walking there was, like, that's something that seemed easier to walk through by clearing it. Yeah, after, so we have to go, like, we have to clear for five minutes and then, and we're, once we get past that point, we're... Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, okay. As long as it's not the whole way through. Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Uh, do you have any particular tools or weapons that would be helpful with this specific task? Only a only a dagger, nothing bigger than that. I don't have any have big body influence. I have uh, fire, but I probably shouldn't use it. <laughs> yeah. Handsaw and a small knife. <laughs> yeah, yeah Tekka's gardening stuff and Brooke's sword, maybe. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Uh, since everyone can contribute uh, with something, uh, most of it can contribute with something. Um, let's see, that's easy enough for you to do. Tekka did find uh, a good spot where plants are not particularly overgrown. <clears throat> uh, and uh, your, uh, Tekka, your understanding of it from the way you saw it was that uh, uh, it seems that uh, in a jungle... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Okay, I got this. In a jungle, um, for plants, uh, life is all about fighting for precious sunlight. At the edge of it is where there is a, a thickest group of plants. But once you guys push your way in, it's all about growing as tall as possible um, to break through the canopy uh, and get precious sunlight. So as soon as you guys make your way in, uh, that's when you are plunged uh, in uh, um, a much, much darker area. So, the way we're gonna do this uh, is that we are going to... You, get, you guys are going to make some progress uh, uh, every day and you get to pick uh, uh, what you want to focus on. Um, Mm, or rather, how you want to um, to search for what you're looking for. I assume your priority is finding the one who stares? Yes. <coughs> yes. Um, <coughs> actually, let me, let me put back the map. Uh, you can basically look for each, into each hexagon uh, in this area uh, every day. Um, and, you, and you get to decide how you want to, like, uh, spread out your search. Um, what, what are the boundaries? Can we draw, like... <clears throat> uh, ooh, drawings will not carry over when I save this, unfortunately, so we can use little tokens instead. Okay. Um, this is your map, so let me just build it in. And uh, you know that the jungle is roughly this entire area, so it's just... Okay, that works. And we can bring in... Little pawns. <laughs> this is great. Oh wait, you have a... Okay, so you're starting from here. And you can mm -hmm. uh, keep yeah. track of where you've been by, like, I'll just copy more of them. Oh, those are my inspiration Whoa. dice. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, give me, give me, give me, give me. 
<laughs> Free for all. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, and we're gonna use roughly this circle as like the actual edge of the jungle. It's not that round, of course, but. <clears throat> um, perfectly spherical jungle. Do you want to? How do you want to proceed from here? Are you trying to reach the heart of the jungle? Are you trying to explore its edges? Um, any particular way you want to go about this? About doing this? Maybe going to a high point, so Taka could do his climbing again, and then see if he can see anything. Okay. Yeah, are we able to see, like, you know, the big mama tree that like kind of stands above the others? Is that around? <laughs> Is this the sort of thing where we're like each going to try our own thing? Or uh, uh, is it just what the group is doing? Well, as a group, we have to decide like w w your focus on of where you're going. So, like for example, what what uh, Dennis just suggested of finding the highest ground. That means you'll be approaching like a specific hex, uh, and always looking for the high ground over time. Uh, okay. But yeah. Um, before we start going towards any particular spot, I think Talix might want to talk to some of the local birds and maybe get their input on the lay of the land in the jungle. Oh and yes, absolutely. Also, if they've seen anything obvious, like a metal beast. And yeah, of course. Where they where it lays. Places where it they might want to stay away from. Mm -hmm. Right. Like anything they can tell us, but otherwise, yeah, just the, the lay of the land would be something. Yeah, uh, so let's begin with that. Uh, as you have just pushed your way into the, the proper jungle uh, and you're beginning to move forward, the Talix are just immediately on the lookout for uh, friendly animals. Um, go ahead and roll an animal handling check. And your spell is a, is a ritual, I think. You don't need to consume yeah. spell slots, all right. Yeah, I just can need Pip to assist with this? Okay, yeah. Please. Yeah. Both of you can have a chat. Yeah, do you want to make your own roll, or...? Uh, I was just going to give you advantage. Okay. <laughs> Probably doesn't that matter, but... That works. <clears throat> okay, so 26. Okay. So, um, as you begin to push your way through the jungle, um... You all come to, to see what uh, Taka saw, that uh, at the bottom of it, sunlight barely breaches through. And uh, um, not, not many animals are um, at the level that you are at. But you can hear plenty of chirping up in the understory and in the canopy. Um, with uh, Pip calling for them and asking them to, to, uh, uh, to come down and have a chat. Uh, the two of you en end up uh, speaking with uh, an eagle. Um, this one looking like a, a different, uh, a different breed from the one that the ones that uh, you Talix are familiar with uh, uh, back on Plurina. This eagle has bright green feathers, uh, um, with some of them alongside the, the edge of the wings being white. Uh, and the the eagle. Um, Let's you know that uh, life in this area is good. Um, there are next to no dangers uh, to it. Um, and there is a, a good source of water directly to the west from where you are. Well, maybe if we go in that direction, uh, I guess that's all the information I'm getting from this one. It's not telling us anything about where the high ground is or any or any signs of one who stares might be, but maybe if we go to this watering hole, I can find some more uh, animals to talk to. Some beasts who are on the ground and might be a little more concerned with the one who stares. Since the one who stares doesn't fly, maybe the birds don't concern themselves with him. Yeah. It's... <clears throat> At least it's a direction to start and we can see if we're heading up and down, up or down, and then decide from there. 
How many hexes can we explore per day in this jungle? One per day. If we're going... Okay, one per day, okay. And the watering hole was... Directly to the west. Directly to the west. <clears throat> uh, you don't know about the actual distance. It could just be right. any of these. Sounds like a good place to start. What do you guys think? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. something yeah. I'm heading. Everything needs water. They tend to congregate there. Yeah, and uh, once we get to a watering hole, maybe we can figure something else out. Or we might see something else along the way. Or, you know, just have a base camp of some sorts. Yeah, it's good to... We don't know how long we're going to be here. Knowing where water is might be good anyway. We have chosen West. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, you have. So. Uh, okay. The first half of your day is pleasantly uneventful. Um, the further you travel, the more hot and humid uh, the place is starting to feel. Um, and you're beginning to hear the buzzing of mosquitoes, and every once in a while you find yourself swatting them off with your hands. Oh, um, but you know what <laughs> Talix <Alex> has? <laughs> he'll, uh, he'll portion out some insect repellent to everyone. So I'll, I'll take off five of those. How long do, do they last? Uh... 24 hours. One one dose is 24 hours. Hmm. I have 30 altogether, so now I'm down to 25. Okay. I'll let you keep track of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll also take na nature checks from everyone today. Okay. I'm proficient in nature. <coughs> proficient, you say? Yeah, it means I get a plus one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you roll another 26? I did. <laughs> nice or hot today. Talix was made for this jungle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, it's around noon um, that some of you come to the realization that, wow, it's, it's actually raining. But none of the water is falling on you. You can just hear the very, very far away um, sound of the raindrops hitting the leaves above you. But the canopy above your heads is so thick that most of it is just not... Uh, um, falling on you at all oh. um based on um how uh, the ground is starting to turn it's just a little bit muddy beneath the layer of uh, um of decaying leaves uh, um it looks like it should be easy enough to track things if you wanted to um so you can be um you can be on the lookout for that, but for the time being, it doesn't look like any animal, uh, any creature has been uh, um, in your area recently. Hmm. Then as for the afternoon... Mm. You're all on the lookout for any glinting of metal. Of course, if you were to see something like that, you'd know you are on the right track. And sure enough, uh, there comes a moment when it's Brook who spots something up ahead. Just a moment where he sees a um, light coming from roughly somewhere to your left. And it was just for a moment. And then so it's like gone. A yeah, like a reflection. All right. <clears throat> I think I just saw a reflection, and so it could mean that there's metal. So, try to be quiet, and let's go into this direction. Okay. 
we approach. Okay, are you trying to be quiet? Yeah, yeah. So we stealth in the direction. Mm -hmm. I'll take a stealth roll from everyone, including Duchess. Oh no. <laughs> Probably she doesn't have disadvantage. Oh. Oh. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, you slow your pace and you begin to approach in the direction where Brooke spotted something. Um, as you're getting closer, you decide not to, to go straight towards it, but try to get a little bit around where there is a bit more cover uh, between the, the trees in the area. Um, and then you're approaching from what should be its uh, right side. Um, and then there is another glinting, another moment when uh, uh, the leaves in a canopy above you open up just enough for um, a little bit of light. Uh, it's not even direct sunlight, it's just uh, more light than it would be uh, normally in this area. And you see it again, something sparkling, something shining, uh, something that uh, is not moving. Uh, it's exactly where Brooke had spotted it the first time around. Um, and as you come closer, you begin to... Um, to relax a little, as there doesn't appear to be um, a creature made of metal, but rather a, a small metal, uh, uh, something made of metal that is that is uh, um, stabbed through a wooden pike. Uh, by the time you you have reached it, uh, it seems to be a skull. Um, fashioned out of various different bits of metal, just put together um, in, a, in a very rough uh, uh, manner. It's barely holding uh, itself together. Uh, huh. The skull is made of metal? Yes. I, I'll take out one of our wooden skulls and hold it up to seem about the same... The same in shape or make or something? Like, any similarities? The way they have been constructed is different. The one made of metal is made of different me uh, metal pieces that have been put together, while the one you have is a single wooden carving. Uh, mm. But otherwise, they are very similar. You haven't really paid too much attention to the skull that... Uh, um, that glimmer sold you or treated you um but you do you do notice that it doesn't seem to be fully humanoid neither of them looks fully humanoid it has a uh, a slightly different shape uh perhaps an artistic decision or it might it feels almost like it's part animal and part human What does this mean? We oh. are in their territory. Do you, is it like a, like a do not cross sort of thing? From the stories we've been told, that is likely. So that means we cross it? <clears throat> we go. Yeah. That's why we're here. Uh, I would like to take the metal skull. Yeah, you can just easily dislodge it from the wooden pike. And you can add it to your inventory. Um, we might learn more about this later. Hmm. How All does right. Glimmer get in here? Maybe it's easier from above. 
Oh, I do wonder how she finds this thing. Okay. Ready to continue? Mm -hmm. Cleared. Boop. Da, 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 da. <laughs> we mark off a ration? Or... Yes, please. Um, so we didn't have any opportunities to hunt today. Maybe once we get to the watering hole, that'll change. Um, I think we'll need to. Yeah, you can. <laughs> uh, you absolutely can. Yeah, we don't um, have remotely enough rations <laughs> to <laughs> scan this forest hex by hex. Um, okay. I'll just take a group survival check from everyone. And that's going to be for the next uh, uh, three days. So Pip will not hunt any animal, but... Uh, he would be happy to uh, look, look for, for any berries. sort of interesting oh. plants and berries and like mm. anything that he thinks he could use for for down the road. The balance perseveres. <laughs> the D give us. The D take us. <laughs> it's still a seven. Okay. I'm missing Tekka? Yep. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. Tekka, you're fine. save us. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five. Casimir. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so I, uh, Pip said he's not looking for, uh, to hunt for animals. Um, but who is? I probably would. Yeah, I think everyone else. Okay, Talix included? Yeah. Okay, and so is Casimir. Um, mm -hmm. turns out that, uh, at least in this area, um... Finding game is uh, not too difficult. Uh, you struggle a little because all of you are unfamiliar with this kind of jungle. Um, and you, you end up just losing a lot of time orienting yourselves and figuring out where animals actually gather. Um, but it seems that uh, the the ground floor is a good enough source of uh, mushrooms that, you're, that you know are safe to eat and berries. Uh, and as soon as you turn your attention upward, uh, you're able to shoot down various kinds of, uh, of birds and uh, uh, other animals uh, above you. Uh, this will feed you um, based on what you get today and in the following two days. Um, there will be one free meal for each of you. So today you don't count down your rations, but the next two days you will. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and that's for the night. It's uneventful. <laughs> Sorry, I just I had to like look at my chart and I was just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. <laughs> yep, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine. Okay. Following day. All right. I guess oh. we're mm -hmm. still looking for that watering hole. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're still traveling to the west, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. I guess we can just try to make, take note of if we're heading uphill or downhill. Or yeah. Like that. Um, would you like to keep heading uphill while traveling west? Because um, if you're looking for the, for the way the terrain is inclined, uh, if you wanted to gain height, uh, you would be heading a little bit more north. Mainly west, but west northwest. North by northwest. So basically, on the following so day, be here. 
if it, if it seems like we need to go north to go uphill, maybe we just take note of that for now and still try to find the watering hole? I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, I think finding the watering hole is a good place to start. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. So just west for now. Everything is normal for the first few hours of today's travel. Um, you don't come across anything, uh, um, any other animals or anything unusual like uh, like the skull you found. Uh, no signs really of uh, of civilization in the slightest, but just uh, um, a world that is mainly living over your heads uh, and leaving you alone. Uh, on the ground of the jungle until you hear it a scream that just pierces the air and it sounds it sounds humanoid and full of uh, pain and terror it's chilling you've never heard anyone scream like that before and as the um, as you you just come to a stop and you listen it seems to be coming a little bit more from the south compared to where you are um, it keeps going and going and going and then there's a brief pause you imagine somebody taking a deep breath and then again screaming oh uh -huh. yeah we you know, check that out right mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> all right so it's gonna arm up and <coughs> go uh it is Far away, but uh, you pick up speed, uh, and uh, Talix, you end up you end up naturally in the lead, uh, just way ahead of everyone else. Uh, uh, and... Don't wait for me. I'll catch up. <laughs> 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 um, uh, Talix, you have to hold on to your hat to to stop it from just flying off. Uh, the the air feels sharp against your face, and you no longer feel uh, just hot and humid. All you can focus on is just this sound that's filling your ears, and it's starting to feel like, like, like this person is barely taking in any air, uh, and just screaming and screaming and screaming. It's starting to feel unnatural. Uh, surely somebody can can't can't be in this much pain uh, just never ending constant um, and as you're the first person to get really close uh, to, to where you're hearing the sound the area around you is clearer uh, there's fewer trees around and as you slow down your horse you can feel uh, the wind blowing all around you um, and the you look you look further ahead and there's something not a person but uh, another skull on another wooden pole and that's what's screaming the skull this one is made <sighs> of wood it looks just like uh, the ones you have you're not sure how it's making that noise There is a chance that this is a trap, Talix. Um, Professor, are you around? <laughs> I don't think he's Professor! There. I am very low speed. <laughs> um, it seems uh, it's, what is that? <laughs> seems to I be mean, enchanted. Yeah. It it's sounds like an, some way of alarming or drawing attention. That's why we should probably back up a bit and see if that's a trap. Alright. What did I miss? How far away can you tell if something's magical or not? Uh, 30 feet. 30 feet. That's a little close. If it's just an ambush... Might not be... Hold on. Um... Yeah, you're about 50 feet away from this thing. Now, I know they make, uh... Mechanical traps, too. Okay, I've got something I can use. Give me a minute. By which I mean six seconds. 
Telix is going to his bag and he's going to just kind of close his eyes and put his hand to the ground and just listen. And he's going to cast Find Traps and I will detect any manufactured... Okay, so it's like anything that would inflict a sudden or unexpected effect, which was specifically intended as such by its creator. Uh, so yeah, manufactured trap or the alarm spell or a glyph of wording, anything like that, within 120 feet. 120 okay yeah yeah okay uh sorry i'm just reading on it uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> the spell merely reveals that a trap is present you didn't learn the location of each trap but you do learn the general yeah, it doesn't nature tell you of where the danger one is or like what the trap is it just says there is a trap within 120 feet of you and it's it's like whether it's like there. yeah yeah the general nature of the danger I would assume means like whether okay. it's lethal or not or maybe all right um uh Talix, as you put your hand uh, uh, on the ground um you feel your senses expanding ever so slightly the sound of the scream uh, filling your ears and then it fades a little bit as you um you're focused on everything but that and you can feel there is a weakness in the ground somewhere near you um something that has been hollowed out and is designed for for people to fall into it uh something that has been definitely designed by an intelligent mind oh i think you're right brooke yeah i'm smart <laughs> so this is one of the one who stares traps. Probably. <clears throat> that means they know, unless that it's that is something that happens daily. They know we're around, right? They know they're being hunted. Well, you've got friends in here hunting them too, right? Mm. Is there still alive? Um. So. So what? Should we just go go elsewhere? I'm a little curious as to the nature of that thing, but uh, it's probably not worth the risk. We know more or less what it's there for. A lure of some kind. Mm -hmm. But why? Like I said, I think it knows it's being hunted. It wants to kill the people that are after it. Can I ask for a perception check from everyone? Yeah. Thank you. You may. <clears throat> but only because you said please. Well, oh my goodness. I don't think I did. Oh, oh no. Jason. Oh wow, Jason. Oh wow, <laughs> that school's still screaming. <laughs> I'm so loud, I can't concentrate. It's too loud, I can't see. <laughs> but <laughs> but as as for the the screaming that you are hearing, most of you are just trying to tune it out. But uh, um, uh, it's to be expected that uh, um that Pontifex the one of the sharpest uh, minds in the group, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh and Brooke who is just. Paying at the attention to um, not just the sound uh, of the screams, but just the uh, the sound of the wind, the howling of the wind all around you. Uh, the two of you realize that the screaming that you are hearing, the sound that the skull is producing, uh, corresponds to the strength of the wind. As the wind dies down a little bit, so does the screaming, becomes a little bit uh, lower and a little bit lower pitched. And whenever the wind does pick up, the scream becomes louder, more intense, and a little bit higher pitched. Um, both of you come to the conclusion that it seems like the wind is what's causing it uh, in uh, some manner or another. Oh, 
Can you try with with one of ours? You fall? Uh, what? <laughs> All right, tell us to just hold out one of the skulls into the wind and see if you can reproduce the effect. Oh, um, yeah, okay. Uh, you hold up your skull and uh, um, you just turn around a few times until you feel like, yes, the wind is blowing through, uh, through it uh, and it's starting to make uh, a noise. Uh, the, it, it, it sounds surprisingly just like a man screaming. In, uh, and, and the more uh, perfect you get the angle, the more accurate uh, um, it sounds, the, mo the more real it sounds, and the more in agony this person seems to be. Um, when, you, when you stop holding up the skull and you just look at the back of it, uh, it seems to be built like a whistle. Um, you don't necessarily need wind to make it work, you could just blow into this one hole in the back. You gave us Aztec death whistles! <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> well, uh, now we know what they're used for. Rather unpleasant. Okay. Um, I think we keep a wide berth from any of these things from now on. If there is one trap, there will be others unlike it. Right. Variety is important. <clears throat> Just be on the lookout. Okay. Do you resume your journey then? Yeah. Yeah, I think we head so. back and go our original direction. Okay. Um, I would like to ask for a wisdom saving throw from everyone. Mm. Oh dear. <laughs> Squeak too? There we go. And um, everyone just killing it. Squeak too. What about Duchess? Not Duchess. <laughs> okay. The uh, you leave behind the skull. And you you watch where you're stepping. You make sure to come back exactly where you came from. Uh, after you've been warned by Talix that something might be here, uh, something might be in the ground. Uh, so you you step the way you came from, knowing that like that it was fine. You you got in. Uh, here without st stumbling onto anything but as you walk away the, s the sound even though you have uh, discovered its source it remains chilling it remains uh, uh, eerily human and it stays with you for a while even after you're out of uh, uh, out of your shot and you're no, no longer hearing it uh, there are moments where you almost feel like it's still there you continue your journey um, further into the jungle to the west um, the, the vegetation is starting to thicken uh, a little bit uh, travel slows down um, the rain has is picking up uh, in intensity and it's starting to finally trickle um, down into the ground you're walking. And as everything becomes a little bit more muddy, uh, Duchess begins to uh, to slow down. Uh, the rest of you, every once in a while, one of your feet gets stuck in the ground, and you have to just spend a good a good half a minute just pulling yourself out of it. Uh, uh, the progress you're making is a little slower, and it's 
tiresome. Um, Talix. Um, uh, use your bug repellent yesterday or today. I think I'll use it every day as long as it's an issue. Okay. Uh, the bugs in this area, the mosquitoes in particular, are um, everywhere. Um, yeah, I'll use it again. It would be it would be too uncomfortable, and even with it, uh, it the buzzing is constant, and it's just getting to your nerves. Um, as you're basically trudging through what feels like uh, uh, the swamp that you that you went through a long time ago between Cleon and Vera, um, you reach the end of the day utterly tired. Um, you begin in one point of exhaustion uh, before your long rest. Which may or may not matter, depending on what I roll next. Wait, all of us? Yes, all of you. Hmm. <coughs> Where do I add to exhaustion? It's... Are that conditions? Next to your defenses? Under your hit points. <coughs> okay. Um... For tonight, it does not matter. Um, as you are, you are left alone during the night, and you're able to just uh, recuperate your strength. Uh, mark down rations for the day. Take your long rest. Is the exhaustion gone? Yes, yeah. exhaustion is. Uh, 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 you heal one level of it uh, for uh, whenever you take a long rest. Nice. Uh, so yeah, even though you reached the end of the day, um, that you barely could take another step, um, you just sleep in for an extra half hour the following day, and you're you're ready to continue. Uh, that just seems to be in a good mood in particular this morning, Talix. Uh, can I ask her why? Um. Duchess was not bothered by anything during the night. And uh, she likes this area. Uh, she likes the taste of the grass in here. Good. Uh, does she still have the same opinion of, uh, of Casimir? <laughs> yes, she does. Okay. So we've been traveling with Casimir for a while. Uh, what sorts of things does he eat? What does he eat? Yeah, horses. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you you see him uh, eat uh, the same things as you. He has his own rations, which are just like yours, uh, uh, mainly made up of uh, dried food that uh, 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 can last for a long while on the road. Your vegetables. Both. Okay. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> he, he, he does seem to prefer the meat oh. <laughs> that's what you were after <laughs> yeah. dog <laughs> uh, so Pip today would uh, be looking around at all of the plant life and stuff and would uh, walk over to Tekka and say, um, hey, Tekka. Yes. You remember um, a week or two ago when we were talking about the kind of stuff that, that Granny would make? Mm, I do. Uh, I've been thinking this might be a good place to look for some of the, the weird and interesting plants that she uses. What would she use? All sorts of things, but uh, I mean, just look at this place. There's, there's gotta be like loads of like really weird things. We could make, we could make all kinds of potions with them, like, like a, uh, uh, like a potion of, of, of plant growth. Like we, we could grow or something. Well, 
this place does not seem to need growth. But yes, we do not know this plant life, but we should look and try. What about this bush? Do you see its berries? Mm hmm Perhaps not to be eaten, but we can cook with it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pitbull just like sort of picks some of them off and put them in a in a pouch to his side and uh, just keep doing stuff like that throughout their travel. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can I have one survival roll from Pip? One survival roll from Pip. <laughs> okay. Um, you just purchased a herbalism kit, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so this is your first time actually having one and using one. Correct. Um, it it comes with uh, pouches and little boxes and compartments to like uh, place and categorize your ingredients in. Um, so you're starting to you're starting to fill it up. Uh, slowly, at first with things that you either uh, know really well or maybe Tekka can uh, point you towards. Um, although, uh, they're, how to actually use them, I, um, y it, it, it's knowledge that is uh, still a little lacking for you. Uh, mm -hmm. But you're, you're already thinking of like all the fun ways you're going to experiment. Uh, and yeah, for now you'll begin, you'll begin gathering. Um, I don't remember if I already asked, did you guys count down your rations uh, for the day that just passed? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. So, mm -hmm. next. Um, one, two, three. I'm going to need Brook to roll a dexterity saving throw. Oh, of course. <laughs> a wild fireball approaches. Effects now. <laughs> I'm getting so crazy in these woods. Where is the rain? <laughs> <laughs> Why did it just oh, rain? Burn this canopy from the sky. <laughs> it just okay. rain, Pontifex. Um, here it is. So, um, as you're progressing through the morning, um, Brooke, you feel something catch one of your feet. Uh, and then you hear a, a sudden noise of uh, uh, something just whipping the air, and then you see a shadow upon you, and you are hit straight in the chest by something heavy and metallic uh, that just uh, came at you with such force uh, that you are thrown back. But instead of falling on your back, uh, you find yourself... Um, not hitting the ground, but being held by whatever force it just hit you. Uh, the rest of you saw, um, as as Brooke's foot uh, triggered something, it, it, he uh, stepped onto uh, just a very thinly stretched uh, vine. Um, and you saw a, a hunting trap dangling from a rope and falling down at him. Uh, and then hitting him in the chest and sort of like clamping around him and he's just currently in its grasps. Uh, Brook... Uh, tw yeah. You take uh, uh, 24 slashing damage. <laughs> <clears throat> How do I get to health bar up on this mini again? Oh, uh, I hit it. Sorry. He missed Oops. it. Oh. 24? Uh, yes. So, like an iron jaw 
bear trap yeah, on, bear a, trap. on yeah. a vine just yes. swung down and um and did the... it bite me or did it just hit me it, uh, it, it clamped it would... onto you yes ouch <laughs> uh had it been <laughs> anyone else uh, had it been anyone else it would have been their face but you being oh, far oh, taller oh. than than uh, the most people it got your chest you're so nice, Winsor, that you let me have the text saving throw. Uh, you failed it, uh, though. Yeah. Everyone, everyone. <laughs> uh, uh, can, I, awesome. can I swing at the vine, or is that not a possibility? <laughs> uh, you can break the vine. Um, yeah. You, you, and, and you almost instinctively do so as you're uh, you're really not sure what happened but something is hitting your chest and you grab your weapon and you slash at like the back of it and the vine that the trap is dangling from breaks and uh, you're um, you're on your feet now uh, but this thing is still clamping onto you uh, Brooke, Brooke, hold still uh, it's okay. gonna hurt a lot oh man what do you have planned? <laughs> no, we, we just need to pry it off. Oh, God. <laughs> Can someone with proper strengths do that, please? Uh, uh, I think yeah, I'm that's stronger that's than you. Some kind of check to like, see if there's like a, like a mechanism that, that's like applying the tension, like where the spring is or something, like some way to mechanically disable it. Uh, yeah, roll an investigation check. Ooh, I don't get to roll these very often. This is my special skill. I mean, these things have to be pried open to be set. It's possible for a human being to pry these things apart. It's just... Uh, I'm going to guidance myself on this one, if that's okay. Uh, okay, well, well uh, Brooke is bleeding. You just take a moment to yeah, take a very good look. Like, let me get a closer look at this. <laughs> And well, Boca, a quick prayer to the, the wyvern to understand oh. machines. <laughs> what the what why uh, why so many dice one is guidance eight. i'm a vidalkin so i have plus 1d4 on two skills investigation is one of them dragon chess oh. is the other mm. okay. and guidance cool and yeah. i rolled really well on all of them um. Yeah, Jesus. I feel like okay, every time yeah. I roll investigation, um, I get a 30. <laughs> Kazumi is cracking his knuckles, and it looks like he's ready to just climb onto Brooke and, and pull this thing off. But Pontif Pontifex, you just you just push your hand right in the middle of this mechanism. You just find the right uh, the right spot to like click it, and then it loosens the D jaws, and you pull it off uh, without having to use any strength. How big is this thing? Um, it's pretty. It's pretty large. It was large enough to grab uh, uh, the the entirety of Brooks, uh, the width of Brooks' chest. And it's at this point that uh, now that this thing is off of him and it's in your hands, so that uh, all of you notice you've seen this specific trap before. Is this the one I gave to Glimmer? It is. <laughs> that double crossing bird. I don't think she knew how it was going to be. Wait a minute. As I cast someone else what started if with Glimmer Lima? is the one who stares? <laughs> Brooke heals 10. Thank you. Tell the rest it. I can do with two levels. Oh, you're good. Okay. Guess I have to be a bit more careful. Not even stepping on the vines. Maybe we should all move a bit more slowly. That seems good that it hit me, huh? So <laughs> random. There must be so many traps around. We're not even on any sort of trail. Mm. Can only imagine how many of these things there must be through this jungle. I should assume they are quite abundant. Or we're getting close. Alex will preemptively uh, charge the bird. <laughs> what? Oh! <laughs> it took me a moment to understand what you meant. Yes. Talix is also doing it over the nights. 
Did we take the the bear the bear trap? <clears throat> uh, it's still functional. You could. All that's been done to it is that it's now it, it's covered in mud, and there's even some some leaves that are stuck to it. Uh, it seems like it was camouflaged uh, on the tree where it was actually uh, um, dangling from. And some furball blood. <laughs> yes. Is that on your <laughs> list? That makes it more valuable. <laughs> It makes it able to detect magic. <laughs> Does anyone want it? It's too heavy for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, okay. Of, no, I'm, I'm like bordering on the edge of encumbrance, so... Speaking of well, your list, is there anything you can get here? No. These are some high trees. Well, it, we're still in the peninsula. Hmm. Not if you say so. Brooke, are you holding on to the trap? Uh, <clears throat> if they want me to, sure. Uh, uh, Casimir will take it if you don't want it. Oh. He figures it will help with uh, um, with catching uh, food for later. He's not wrong. He's so. Well. He will clean it off. Um, okay, so you will be holding on to it. Um, and then... Um, okay. I'll take constitution saving throw from everyone. What? Why? Let's see. I'm dead. <laughs> this fits the narrative. Uh, it, it really does. You um, just get bear trapped. So, <laughs> for the rest of the journey, everyone slows down. Um, what Talix said about how you're not on a trail, so there must be uh, traps like this everywhere, um, it gets to you. Um, you're very carefully watching everywhere you're stepping and trying to see if there's anything above you that you should be worried about. Uh, this slows down your, your journey considerably and, and, and uh, uh, Brooke, um, you're, you're struggling uh, a little bit. You, it, it, part of it is just a pain that you're still feeling, uh, the, uh, the wounds that Alex was unable to completely uh, heal away from you. Uh, but it's mainly just a toll that I took uh, uh, to to your mind um, that is uh, that is really contributing to just this general feel of dread. Um, you're not just going after a simple machine that's made to kill, but this one is a smart one, a cunning one. One that will fight you uh, at your level. Uh, Brooke, you gain a point of exhaustion. Mm -hmm. Got As it. the rest of you continue, well, all of you continue. Um, and uh, Pippi, we're on the lookout for interesting ingredients. Uh, um, so you, you're the first one to to um, whose attention is caught uh, hours later, uh, roughly in the middle of the afternoon, um, by a kind of fruit that uh, um, that you know. Uh, it's not one that grows anywhere near where uh, your home was, uh, but occasionally merchants would bring it in, and it used to be one of your favorites. Uh, this one is called a a shachi. Shachi. It's a bright yellow fruit. Uh, it's pear-shaped, uh, but uh, when you open it, the actual part, the, the edible part of the fruit is only the bottom half, where it's like uh, it has slices, like an orange. While the top part is spongy and doesn't really taste like much. Uh, there's plenty of it in the area. Um, oh. Hey, guys, look at this. I, I used to have these back at home uh, these are uh, these are really good 
I'll try one. I don't want to overdo it this time. Uh, don't eat the top part of it. It's not any good at all. But the bottom... Oh, it's delicious. Oh, that uh, actually reminds me. Uh, and he's going to fish through his bag and pull out that. I, have, uh, I wonder if this thing is sentient yet. And he's going to pull out that blue fruit that he's had this whole time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like at some point in Simply Elon, he may have got it like a like a box for it or something. Just oh, like okay. a That's at least better. So it's just not like this moldy fruit just adhering to the inside of his bag. But, you know. It's probably turned into goop inside of like a little uh, wooden crate. It's yeah, I... <laughs> You're probably hey. drawing a lot of flies right now, given our environment. Yeah, better this than us, yes. Hey, hey, Tekka. <laughs> we could make a potion of vomiting with that one. <laughs> oh, that is not a bad idea. I could practice with my brewing kit for this. Pip, I mean, sometimes uh, picks a does... ton of sachis. <laughs> Yeah, next time that we rest, Pontifex is gonna genuinely try to, like, mix this goopy fruit, like, the pulp of it with, like, water, and just try to get it into one of these vials that he has. <laughs> um, no, no, uh, chiming from the bird, right? It lasts six uh, hours after I charge it. That is correct. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Pip just gets a, gathers a bunch of fruits and left for everybody. Uh, well, be careful when you're venturing out. Again, just watch your stuff. Okay. Uh, Pip, there is one additional property to this, to the Shachi. Um, which is that if you eat too much, it starts to make your voice uh, uh, become more and more high-pitched. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, <laughs> something tells me that you're not going to tell your companions. No. <laughs> <laughs> but he will keep some in case he needs to make a high-pitched potion in the future. <laughs> it's delicious and highly nutritious. He should have more of it. <laughs> Okay. Um, you've made it to the end of the day. Um, although the shachis that you got are not sufficient for like a full meal, so you'll still need to consume your rations, which you should do right now. Um, some of you come to experience the side effect of this fruit. Let's hear During it. Dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Talix resolved himself to eating only one. <laughs> so he is safe. Maybe. One is, yes, one is, uh, does not cause that to happen. What is the threshold? For... Three. <laughs> Who ate three? Come on. Someone had to. Someone's got to volunteer for this. Pet, you did not tell me. <laughs> The quality <laughs> of this fruit. <laughs> Tekka? What? Even higher. <laughs> Has it done? <laughs> ah, shoot. <laughs> this is a nightmare. <laughs> First squeak, it was just the three slices. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's it for the day and for the night. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, Brook and Casimir are awake uh, together for what is the group's uh, second watch. Um, you're making just 
a little bit of small talk, uh, and you both... You both immediately shut up when you hear some rustling nearby. Uh, you can see some movement uh, in uh, in the branches uh, far away from you, just just uh, uh, right at the edge of where the light of your campfire uh, can reach. Um, what are you doing? <clears throat> Should we wake the others or just check it out first? Um, I say you can never be too cautious. Uh, even if uh, the, the half-elf will yell at me, I think we should wake them all up. Alright. Let's wake them up first. Tell you what, you do that. I'll just, I'll just keep an eye out for this. Okay. I wake, shake everyone awake, shake the tree. Pip. <laughs> <laughs> Fell the tree. <laughs> <laughs> There's something in the woods. So, get up. Get ready. Mm, that's whole tree. To get... <laughs> Pip that's for all of you. Pip will make his way down. <laughs> was there a sound? A light? There was wrestling. And just seeing what happened so far. Felt smart to just wake everyone up. Hmm. The rest of you there looking was... in the direction where Casimir uh, seems to have his attention completely focused, and there is more rustling, and then uh, uh, some some noises. Um, the leaves begin to move and shake uh, in various directions all around you, uh, and you can see. Um, you can see the, re the reflections in the eyes of some creatures that seem to be looking at you from a distance. They must be animals, they're not constructs. Um... You think they want some fruit? I mean, we could offer them, if you really want to. Um... Talus is gonna first cast Speak with Animals and call out what do you want? Um, the the sounds you're hearing all around you for a moment seem to get just a little bit further away, uh, some quiet down, but then um, you spot a pair of eyes again. Uh, the the more curious, the more brave. Um, as uh, um, the rest of the party hears that this. Uh, the, the sounds made by an ape, uh, but to Talix and Pip, uh, um, he, this translates to you uh, as a word. <coughs> Food? <sighs> okay, yeah. Uh, how many of those do you have? Uh, I, well, I, I got a lot of them, but we also ate a lot. And, well, how, how many of you are there? Family. Big family? Big family. Oh boy. Uh, well, Pip lays out uh, all the, the sachis that he did gather, uh, except for, for one, one he keeps in his uh, herbalism kit. Um, <laughs> and I don't know, how much would you say I have left? Um, I like to imagine I filled up your backpack. Uh, um, like as many as you could carry, uh, but uh, as apes begin uh, to come out and approach, um, and they begin to to pluck the things you have, uh, it, it's clear that maybe you might have like one for each of them. There's a one, two, three, four, uh, seven approaching, um, and there's something a little strange about them. Um, th these. These apes are roughly uh, the size of an adult gorilla, um, but they have the proportions. Uh, um, the proportions are off. They're more like those of a child, uh, uh, in a way. It feels like these are going to grow far bigger than they currently are. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, well. Uh -huh. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha 
Since we've uh, helped you here, can you answer a question for us? Um, the, the one that's been talking to you currently is uh, busy just peeling, uh, peeling the shachi, and uh, as it, it stuffs um, the, all of its slices all at once in its mouth, uh, it says, hmm, answer. Have you seen something made of uh, metal, something made of maybe something that looks like this? I'll show the skull. Um, some of the apes uh, uh, pull back from you as you as you show uh, the metal skull, and uh, uh, the one's been talking to you points at it with its free hand and says, "Danger." Where where does this thing live? What direction? Um. All directions. How do we find it? We want to hunt this thing. Uh, the ape points to the north. I see it. When? Days ago. Recently. Okay. Mm. Um, I, I wish we had more food for you. That there is a bush that we came across that had all these fruits uh, a bit further that way. Do you know of a watering hole near here? Um. Everyone, uh, all the apes seem to get really excited at the mention of more of these fruits. And some of them already move away from your campsite and start heading to the east, uh, where you pointed. Um, but the one you, you've been talking to um, points, this time to the west and a little bit more to the south of, uh, from the direction you're currently at, and, and, and says, water. Oh, thank you. Uh... I'll go ahead and tell everyone that, uh, you know, that he said he saw the one who stares a few days ago to the north. We probably are getting low on water, right? It's true. Well, unless we could catch some, <laughs> some of the rain, maybe. Uh, Tech has a, a rain catcher, right? Yeah. Doesn't I mean? Doesn't it mostly get in the can canopy and it then does. seep down through the trees into the? Uh, am I thinking of a different campaign, or would, did you guys have like a thing where you would make water every day? Uh, we can. Talix and Pontifex both can create. Uh, yeah. Can create water. Oh, so I think that's like okay. every night before we do the long light, the long rest. I mean. I forgot we have yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the future. Uh, yeah. Basically, whenever. Um, I, I should have addressed this. Um, if you're not near a source of water, uh, every day when you're counting down the rations, you're also going to finish your water. Um, like, the water skin would only last a day. Uh, right. So, yeah, somebody needs to count down a spell slot if you're making if you're making water for the day. Yeah, I can do that. No problem. Good. In fact, just so that we have, like, water... Well, I guess I'd be refilling it each night. Mm -hmm. So, Okay. Uh, so most of so the apes at this point have left. Um, and uh, unless you're you're stopping it, the uh, the last one will also. Yeah, um, I think we've made a deal. Mm -hmm. we, we've exchanged information. We don't need. That. Okay. Uh, yep, it will be off. So, do we want to try northish now? Yeah. Northwest or north? That's how you lead. But it seems like it sort of moves around here and it's going to be hard to pin it down. Hard to know how fast it's going to go. <clears throat> I mean, if it's a big machinery right? as soon as we are on its tracks, we should be able to see in this jungle where it went, right? Hopefully, this thing will tell us something eventually. Alex shakes his bird. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bird is not detecting anything. What what do we do when we do find it? 
Do you think we can... I mean, can we really take it down? <sighs> we'll see, right? So that's what we're here for. Um... Is why we're here. Yeah. I'm way more confident than when we started heading here. Now that Cass is here. But we'll but, be fine. But this this thing's smart, right? What if... I mean, what if we just could talk to it and tell it to stop? Hmm. You would assume that someone has already tried that after doing so much damage, right? Mm hmm. In my line of work, that uh, talking almost never works out. Is that why like we kill don't... everything we come across? I mean, we don't really, right? Everything. <laughs> ah. Then <laughs> yes, Pip. Exactly, that's why. If Gnome still lives, so not everything. I feel like we don't know much about it yet, you know? Everything's been... It's very strange, almost uh, legendary accounts. We don't know much of what this is as a person. It seems to be some sort of person. We don't know what it wants or why it's here. Learning that could give us something at least. Know what it wants, how it thinks. Or maybe it's me. Yeah. Uh, look, the way I see it, if it's a machine, there is no reasoning with it. Well, the machine doesn't make traps like this why not it can it just be, be made to make traps uh, you can make machines that walk you can make machines that build things yeah but it's not these are intelligently designed adapted to to the surroundings and what it manages to scavenge. This is intelligent work, not just following instructions. It's not like the dolls. <laughs> <laughs> Kazume just visibly shivers at the mention of the, at the, mention of the dolls. <laughs> what do you mean they're not intelligent? They talk to me every night. Okay. Well, we should go to bed. I think there is a chance it's either of the two. Like, it could be intelligent, and there's someone behind it, or it could have been created like that. Seeing what the gnomes have managed to do with their creativity, put some magic into it, and why not create, like, a smart machine? Create life? I doubt it. So what? Uh, I I can't I can't attack it if I see it. You want to have a chat with it? I'll be ready to fight like always. But <laughs> no reason to strike first. <laughs> if there's yeah. No yeah. All right. Class, that, is, that is something you will have to get used to. Be prepared to pack a punch before you're allowed to defend yourself. But <laughs> it has worked out in the past, so let's see how it. What kind of thing we're actually up against, right? Because there's always a chance that whatever we're told and everyone who sees it dies is true, and we have to run immediately. Casimir shrugs and he's just going to go sit back to um, the spot where he was keeping watch. 
uh, the rest of you can resume your long rest. And you can take it. The night passes without any more surprises. Uh, one, two, three, four. Huh. Okay. He's heading this way? Um, that's, that's where I was assuming, since there was a little error there. Yeah, True. that makes sense. <clears throat> Boop. Okay, <laughs> where's my thing? My thing is here. We've almost reached the large white obelisk. <laughs> <laughs> that is labeled Rumor Strange Machine Territory. <laughs> um, <coughs> Pip, I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw. Oh no, not my face! <laughs> it's okay, you're too short. It's just gonna go right over you and take your hair. <laughs> no! It's even worse. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been fun, guys. You've got right. more than 24 HP. <laughs> um, as you guys uh, um, uh, turn to the north uh, and begin heading that way, uh, it's, you have barely started your journey again, only half an hour after that, um, Tekka, you're walking right alongside Pip, um, and, uh, from one moment to another, Pip is there, and then he isn't, um, and as he disappears from uh, just the, the very edge of your view, he turn around, um, Pip barely had a chance to just let out a small, short yelp, ah. um, and <laughs> <laughs> um, as he just disappeared through the ground um, a, a pit opened up beneath his feet um, no more than 10 feet deep but as you look down and suddenly P Pip begins uh, to scream uh, as he hits the bottom of it uh, and you can see that he uh, has ended up into a sm small square pit uh, that was hit, that was hidden and camouflaged in in the terrain, uh, that where the bottom is covered in wooden spikes. <gasps> That's... Um, Pip. The <laughs> besides the the surprise of suddenly not feeling the ground beneath you anymore, and just the the uh, the realization that all of a sudden you're you're falling. Um, some of your limbs uh, end up hitting something sharp, but the majority of your body hits something soft. Uh, so Pip, you're taking 15 piercing damage, um, oh. and you're you're stuck as uh, uh, one of your feet and one of your arms got caught oh. into these, these spikes. Uh, but the majority of you has fallen onto a dead body. Oh. Pip just starts crying. <laughs> Pip! Pip, are you, are you okay? Ow, 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 ow. Okay. Uh, hold oh. on. We will be down. I can't Here, move. I'll hold the rope. Tekka, you get him. Um, I, I won't be able to carry... Hold on. I have an idea. Um... So he's going to get one of the attachments out for his core staff, which is a pulley and hook uh, with a rope attached. And then he's going to attach one of the blankets to that. And then, okay, one of you hold this pulley. Sure, when sure. I pull, you get Pip out. Understood? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, Tekka will start climbing, holding the hook, and slowly like walking sideways down the shaft there. Okay, um, that's easy easy enough for you to do with your equipment. Um, and as you get further down, you can uh, 
falling into this uh, is different than just climbing down. You can find uh, uh, a safe spot where you can stand between the poles without getting your, your feet caught onto them. Um, and uh, it's also a very short climb. You could almost, uh, uh, as you're standing at the bottom, you could almost reach the top with your hands if you wanted to. Um, you're just, like, just a couple of feet short. Um, and down there, uh, Pip uh, ha is currently lying um, onto a partially decomposed uh, body. Um, mm -hmm. the, the smell is overwhelming, but also there's uh, something uh, almost uh, weirdly sweet about what you're smelling. Something that doesn't seem to be coming from, uh, from that body. Okay, Pip, this will hurt, but you will be out of here. Okay. Uh, and Tekka will slowly start to pull Pip up and ow, into ow, ow, the blanket ow, 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 ow. and pulls the rope. Pull! We're pulling. Yeah, we... yeah. Uh, with the... Uh, for for the rest of you, pulling Pip up is uh, easy enough. Uh, uh, he's light, and you're all working together. Uh, you, he ends up being pulled out of the pit, uh, and uh, uh, next to your next to you on the side of it. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Talos will cast cure wounds. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Paji returns. Oh, I shouldn't have said the name. Oh, what have you done? <laughs> Thanks, Talix. <laughs> Ow. And, um, Pip is no longer bleeding, um, but the... Uh, uh, this is easy enough for anyone to see, anyone's looking at these wounds, that they have taken on a weirdly yellow coloration. Um, and even as, uh, as the wounds close, thanks to Talix's magic, uh, the strange coloration remains uh, in the area uh, where the skin grows back. Wait, Pip and Tekka are yellow? Uh, mm. Sorry, just Pip. If I said Tekka, I didn't mean to. I got the wrong name. Uh, but Let's see if I can get rid of this. Uh, and I'm going to use presentation to instantaneously clean an object no larger than one cubic foot. Can I just do that? Um, you can, but that's not going to get rid of the coloration on his skin. Oh. Yeah, I'll do it again to change the color to Pip's skin color. <laughs> Does it feel familiar <laughs> to uh, having a snake latch to your skin? Uh, uh? He's asking. <laughs> As very recently that <laughs> happened. Um, okay, I, I. Yes. Yes, it does. But like a snake with way bigger jaws. <laughs> way bigger fangs. Uh, and Tekka, as you are down there, um, you can see that each of these stakes that have been uh, pu that have been pushed uh, into the the ground here at the bottom is covered with this yellowish goo um, that is covered in in flies. Uh, okay. Uh, I think Tekka will quickly look over the the body there. Uh... And if there's nothing in particular that catches the eye, we'll just try to climb back up with that jump. Um, you can roll a perception check. Okay. Okay. The, the person in the pit, although there isn't too much uh, left of him, um, he is not wearing armor. He is in these comfortable um, uh, adventuring clothes, kind of like yours. Um, he, you're not really sure even what 
what a uh, uh, humanoid race he might have been at this point, but at least uh, you do think that uh, um, it, uh, this person is falling into this trap no, uh, no earlier than, than uh, uh, for no more than the five days. Um, nothing else of interest catches your eye. Okay. Uh, once Tech is back up, he'll just uh, get like his shovel attachment and start uh, getting dirt to cover the hole. Uh, filling it up, okay. Yeah, not all the way, but at least to cover all the spikes yeah. and, and the body. He left a body in there and and reset the trap without moving it. I guess that was somewhat fortuitous for you, Pip, but... Mm. It still hurts. Ow. I don't think I managed to do everything I need to do, but... I wasn't prepared for this. I wasn't ready for... Pep, you're just gonna have to fight this as best you can. Mm. Here, let me see if I can heal you a bit more. I'll do what I can. Nine more hit points. I don't have cured poison right it's now. Okay, thank you. We Pip. are. Oh, yeah, go on, go on. Sorry, I was just gonna say, Pip like rarely ever does this, but he he gives Talix like a a side embrace. We are in their territory. We were at a disadvantage to begin with. We cannot expect what comes. So we should move faster. The longer we stay, the more we lose. <clears throat> Pastor's okay with me as long as we're not less careful. Because we can run into all the traps too. We okay. have walked carefully and still. I mean, of course, but you don't know how it would be if we hadn't paid attention, how many more we would have triggered. Yeah, I guess that is the question. Along our journey, have we discovered several of the different types we have found? Right, have we, have we avoided any traps that we've spotted? Um, not so far. Oh. So far, you have then found two. Well, technically, so the far one. We're all for two. <laughs> the oh. technically, the Talix uh, found one that you didn't trigger. Yeah. Um, so one you... for three. <laughs> <laughs> See, Tech, I could be zero for some math <laughs> checks out. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, but I agree that we. <clears throat> The faster we're out of here is probably better. Just, just stay careful. Okay. Uh, I'll need Pip to roll a Constitution saving throw. Okay. Um. <clears throat> you wait until um, Tekka has uh, covered the hole, at least for the most part. Uh, Casimir assists with, assists with it, so you're you're just um, waiting for no more than thirty minutes, uh, uh, which gives you plenty of time to just recover from from the shock of it. But Pip, um, as w with every passing minute, uh, you're beginning to just hear this this almost like a buzzing. Um, 
that seems to be coming just from inside your skull and uh, your vision is getting more and more blurry and by the time uh, uh, the rest of the group is ready to leave uh, you can't see well enough uh, uh, to even just put one foot in front of the other I don't I don't feel good and We need to stop and rest here. We need to get plenty of water. Uh, All right, I'll get on the water. By morning, by morning, I can, I can fix this. You just need to stay strong until then, okay? <coughs> oh. Let me work overnight. Is there any water close by? Uh, Brook can roll a survival check. Unless, uh, uh, is Pontifex just making it? I can just make water. I have okay. magic for days. I can make, uh, this is 10 gallons. Uh, uh, I can make like 300 gallons. <laughs> All right. Ah, gee, if only we had a cat who could detect poison, huh, Professor? <laughs> what? Where's your you cat, me? huh? When do you, you know there is a saying, it is called wrangling cats. You assume that I have control over this thing? What do you think? Yeah. It is concerning that she is gone for this long. She's never left for this long. I haven't woken up in the middle of the night with a furry weight on my face, have I? You have not. <laughs> hmm. Your paralysis demon. <laughs> <laughs> Talix still has her feather, yeah? Yep. Okay, so I'll assume that means that she's alive. Oh, well, <laughs> I guess DM, has it, has it poofed out of existence? What? What do you mean? The feather. Oh, no, you still have it. Okay. Huh. Yeah, you Squeak still have the feather. Squeak just sort of sits uh, by Pip as Pip's laying there, uh, sort of propped up on a stump or whatever, and just says, Come on, kid, make it through this. Uh, Telex, can't you do something with this poison? <laughs> It's gonna have to be overnight. I wasn't prepared. If you catch my drift. Uh, <laughs> it is funny. If a child wasn't uh, dying, that would be more funny, but it is still funny <coughs> as it is. Okay, so you're going to s stay here for the rest of the day? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Da, 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 da. Talix will charge the bird. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, if... <sighs> yeah. Uh, weirdly enough, the only way to get spell slots is to go to sleep, right? Like, I, <laughs> but I can't like I can't get cure disease any faster by staying up through the night. Um. By by getting new prepared spells. I changing, mean. yeah. Uh, you can't. Well, like I. <laughs> I'd let you take a point of exhaustion to stay up during the night and basically sort of like focus on uh, um, on regaining your energy, and I would let you count it as a long rest. That, or it's that not. It's not actually in... to get a spell slot. Isn't the issue? I've got, I've got right. plenty of spell slots to use. I need um, to change my prepared spells. Yeah. If you, how about this? Um, you can spend the morning um, until like until roughly noon, uh, so you do your first half of the day. Um, and you can gain a point of exhaustion, and in return you can swap out one of your spells. Okay. Clerks can just swap their spells anyways. Like, that's just something they can do after a long rest. Right, but we're not taking after a long, long rest. rest. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm letting him do it, like, in the next uh, five hours. And he can swap out one of them in exchange for a point of exhaustion. 
as like an emergency measure of sorts. Okay. Hmm. Um, Pontifex provides the water. And yep. uh, ten uh, gallons. Okay. All right. So as you're taking care of Pip, uh, who is, uh, uh, with every hour that passes, feeling more and more weak, um, and losing more and more, and more of his vision, um, until he can no longer see through his own eyes, um, and has to, has to rely on uh, Squeak to be able to see anything. Uh, we're going to take a small break. Ten minutes. Oh, yeah. Woo. And yeah. I'll see you back in a little bit. <laughs> All right. Cool. See ya. Bye. So uh, you spend some time uh, um, staying near the trap that Pip had fallen into, letting the kid rest and uh, trusting in Talix's divine magic to help him out. Um, Talix, you've never focused... Uh, uh, your magic in the way you're doing now. Uh, you're really just pushed by by uh, desperation, uh, knowing that uh, you might not have enough time um, to spend the night praying to Vakanath uh, to, to save whatever uh, affliction has taken hold of Pip. Um, and by the time when you feel like you might be... Uh, you might be reaching for something. There might be some magic swelling within you that wasn't there before. Um, you might be able to do something about this. Um, you are tired. Uh, this is taking a toll on your body in a way you didn't expect. Uh, but you may add a point of exhaustion and swap out one of your spells. All right. I have done so. Okay. Um, so is as long as Pip is okay by the end of that time frame. Uh, Pip is currently blinded. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll cast Lesser Restoration. Sorry, just Austin actually got the wordle into. I, is that <laughs> real? Disappointed. Yeah, it's real. Than three. Are you? <laughs> I got a good. I, I my first word was very good. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. Wait, how'd you do that? <laughs> I'm just that good. Okay. No, like how did you do this square thing? Oh, you just oh, press the share right. button. Oh look, yeah. I got it in two as well. You did. <laughs> Wait. You just oh, you're <laughs> <laughs> so gullible. <laughs> I trust my friends too much. <laughs> ah, okay, Talix. <laughs> what are you casting? Lesser restoration. It removes a disease or a condition. I or poison. Well, po I guess it's just the poisoned condition. Okay, let me says one disease or affliction. Let me actually bring it up. One disease or one, one condition. Disease or condition. Uh, okay, so... Uh, if I'm pretty sure that he is poisoned, I'd probably prioritize that. Um, Otherwise, I guess I can just remove the blindness. You can oh. do you can do a medicine check uh, to decide how sure manage. you are. Uh, that's a skill check, and one level of exhaustion Ability. gives. Yeah. Okay. Then yes. Oh. 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 Right in the disadvantage. Okay, you <laughs> uh, you take a look at Pip's condition. Uh, you can see you just wave a hand in front of his eyes, and it's it's clear uh, that he's unable to see, and he's he's shivering, and uh, the the parts of his body that were punctured by those stakes, uh, the 
the yeah, the part of the skin that has turned yellow has expanded outward. Um, some uh, obviously whatever was coating those the stakes uh, um, has is causing this to him. But the the nature itself of what is afflicting him is currently escaping you. Uh, you've never come across anything like it. So is. Is the blindness the only thing that I can confidently diagnose? Like, if I tried to remove poisons, would I be gambling kind of thing? Uh, yeah, exactly. I guess I'll do blindness for now, and uh, at least I can be a little less scared, and if something else terrible happens, he'll not be a, you know, helpless. And, uh, I'll try to do better after we get some rest. Okay. Uh, the blindness, you said? Yeah. Alright. Um, Pip, you hear, um, Talix, uh, um, being uh, just somewhere uh, in front of you, and you he you hear his voice, and it's it's soothing and warm. Uh, you feel him uh, take one of your hands, and you almost uh, it almost feels like you're just wrapped in a comfortable blanket. Uh, Talix's um, familiar magic uh, warms you up, and you stop shivering. Uh, you can see again. Dad. Oh. Oof. <laughs> Pep, uh, can you see? Uh, what? Oh, hey. Yeah, I can. I can see. Whatever, whatever this poison is, it's pretty nasty. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to keep working at this, okay? Mm -hmm. So just take it easy. How do you feel? I'm um, achy. Hmm. I don't think there's much more I can do for him in the short term. I'm very tired. <laughs> what do you think? Should we keep traveling or what are the rest of you wanting to do? I, obviously, we should wait until he is uh, back to full capacity. I don't mind waiting out in this forest. Yeah, he. He can't really travel in this condition, so there's no use on moving These forward. are plentiful, there is rain, he's away from the hustle and bustle of the city, this is fine. Okay. If we were to encounter anything bad, it would only make a bad situation worse. Right. Uh, I'll set up my tent, and uh, we can lay a minute. Okay. Can someone else, if we're taking watch, can someone else take my watch along with me? I'm not sure that I can, uh, that I'm in a great state sure. to be alert. I'm quite lucid. I will be there. Okay. I will simply uh, trade with the last watch of someone. Or we just forego one at this fine with I mean, me. me and Kath have been sharing a watch, so... Yeah, I, <clears throat> I can take Pontifexes. Yeah. Alright. Okay, you set up camp, um, just far enough from the pit so it's out of view, and you don't have to think about uh, the body that you have just discovered and then buried. 
um, those of you who are uh, tired and uh, pip, of course, you just focus uh, on taking it easy for the rest of the day. Um, and the rest of you keep watch for the rest of the afternoon and then into the evening. You keep your um, you keep your foraging at a minimum for today. Uh, trying not to split up while some of you are in no condition to defend themselves if anything were to happen. The afternoon passes without uh, anything uh, happening, without any uh, creatures uh, crossing your path. Uh, uh, the rain is just... Uh, it seems to be becoming a bit more intense. Uh, you can you can feel it. There's moments where um, you just seek shelter uh, beneath the largest the trees and beneath the Talix's tent, but uh, um, it, it only rains really heavily um, enough that you can feel it through the canopy for about an hour before it uh, uh, it becomes uh, uh, um. It, it uh, you you can it, it, the rain is no longer intense enough to break through the canopy. As for the night, um, the first watch is now taken by Kazumi, who takes over for both Pape and Talix. Um, no, wait, Pontifex first, then Brook, Tech, and then Casimir, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, wait, wrong die. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's fine. The night also passes without uh, uh, anything disturbing you. Uh, those of you who have a point of exhaustion can heal one. And uh, all of you count down your rations. Uh, Pontifex, one spell slot for the water. Uh, Pip, uh, you don't uh, heal... Um, if you have an exhaustion level, you don't heal it. Uh, and you will be getting one during the night. Okay. Um, though your eyesight has returned, uh, um, over the course of the evening, it begins to become blurry again. <coughs> and uh, during, during the night, you find yourself just uh, wide awake. Um, it, every once in a while, you, you hear something. Um, it sounds like the, the screams that you heard just a few days ago, um, but it feels more like they're surrounding you. And then there's moments of quiet, and those are even more oppressing. Um, you can't help but, but feel like you're being watched. Pip just, like, looks around and... and he can't really see much anymore and uh he especially doesn't want to be in a tree tonight he he wants to you know stay close to the ground and mm -hmm. uh he he eventually just moves closer and closer to uh wherever talix is sleeping um and just lays down near him tries to get whatever rest he can but uh, yeah. Okay. The following morning, um, what are you guys doing? Okay. Say we continue as we are until Pip is cured. Alex is going to check on Pip and see how he's faring. He has... still can't see. Uh, and yeah, as far as you can... Actually, Talix, you get another medicine check this morning. Okay, good. Um, can I help him with this one? Since now that we've been at this for a couple of days. Yeah. Oh, you know what I should do? Is use guidance. Okay. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> so you can. It's the spell that some people have. <laughs> you can I don't do know who. Uh, your yeah, medicine roll. More than one person. With... 
<laughs> with advantage and guidance. I'll just, I don't know how to do advantage and the guidance at the same time, so I'll just do them separately. Uh, I think you can straight up load up the, like, load the D4 in and then click advantage and it should just work. <laughs> well, the advantage helped a little bit. Oh my goodness. Well, all that for a grand total of 12. It's above average. Okay. Um, while neither of you are familiar with this, uh, um, it feels like Pip is afflicted by some kind of sickness. Um, he is very feverish. Uh, 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 he's, you're wrapping him in blankets, but he's still shivering. Um, and uh, his eyes, you can heal his sight for a while, but then it goes away again after some hours. Okay, I'm going to cast Detect Poison and Disease, and that will tell me the kind of poison, poisonous creature, or disease. So it actually identifies it. Okay. Um. Keep keep breathing, study. Mm -hmm. Just there. Can you hear me? Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. I'm just bopping to the music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is farther gone than I had feared. Oh no. <laughs> um. Okay. Your spell. Um. I suppose. I suppose it. 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 it uh, so I, I'm stuck on like it revealing like the name of of the disease, but I, I, I... If I wouldn't know what the disease is named, then I guess I, I shouldn't know it. I would um, say. Like, if, if you don't think I should have the name, that's fine. Okay. But, um, like but the properties... It, least. Yeah, the description of it <laughs> uh, becomes uh, apparent uh, enough to you. Um, and you, you have a feel for its, its progression. Uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, you have already seen that it affects the eyes first, uh, um, and you know that if you if this were to keep going, eventually Pip will also lose his hearing, and then eventually his heart would stop. Uh, the chances of surviving this uh, without it being treated are um, uh, not very good, uh, but you feel like your magic should be able to eradicate it. Uh, this should not be beyond uh, uh, your powers. Okay, well, with that knowledge, I will try to channel less lesser restoration into whatever aspects I think is at the root of this. So it is a disease and not a, it is not a, a disease. poison. That's interesting. Okay. Um, you know exactly where to direct your magic, and you can feel it uh, lifting uh, this affliction from Pip's body. Uh, it's just um, a matter of, uh, of seconds, uh, and uh, Pip, your, your eyesight is returned to you, that, that buzzing uh, in your ears is gone. Uh, and y you still feel uh, dreadfully tired, but um, you no longer feel like you're uh, you're on the verge of death. Oh, <coughs> oh, Talix, I oh. made it. Thank you. I think he's gonna be okay, everyone. Good work, Alex. Can I ask one more thing? Uh, was, me? Would I be able to tell if this was was it like a parasite or is this like 
something else. Um. I guess like, the cause. Just falling onto like a diseased right. pike. I don't know. Yeah, because it, it was definitely applied with something. I'm just trying to figure out. Uh, this is caused by a parasite. Um, and you feel like it's it's something that's been lured um, to the trap by um, by the coating that was onto the uh, onto the six. It wasn't exactly poisoned, per se. Whatever... whatever set that trap... They're not just knowledgeable in construction, they have a very... very keen knowledge of the land. Well, I... I can say this. I no longer want to talk to it. <laughs> huh. Yeah, it's surely caused a lot of trouble for the local wildlife. Pip gets it's... to his feet and uh, nuzzles squeak up to his face. Thanks for looking over me, buddy. You know, that cat would be pretty useful. You just I gotta agree. concentrate. On what? The cat. Is something supposed to happen? Um, uh, my vague understanding of the spell is that, that it does not require concentration. <laughs> 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 I'm thirsty. <laughs> That's the sound I make when I drink. No can I drink some? <laughs> <laughs> Here, tell us who he is for his skin. That will give you them. ten gallons of water. <laughs> <laughs> I simply need you to define yourself as a container, and I will fill you with ten Open your mouth. <laughs> Where to? Knowing what they are capable of, do we carry on? Uh, we came all this way for a reason. The peep has suffered for this. There's no reason to call it off now. Would there even be a breakup plan? It off. What do you say, Dennis? Would there even be a backup plan, Tekka? Come back with more people? Trying to find again? Or... It seems like the larger the group we bring in here, the more danger it is. How heavily trapped everything is. <clears throat> I actually agree with that. So we should move on. Try to find we know, it. I know this thing is coming, but... Well... There's still a lot more to learn. I say we push forward. Then we carry north, find a height. I can find a battle. There must be more to this jump. All right. North it is then. I guess we'll go right this time to keep it more true north overall. Okay.
Um, yeah, that works. Uh, as you, uh, I believe, uh, Pippa, do you have one or two points of exhaustion right now? I think just the one. Okay. Um, then you continue. You're headed further north, further away from the source of water you're told about, and instead you're trying to um, follow the direction that the ape gave you and to um, uh, mainly go uphill whenever possible. Um, uh, here it is. The, the bugs, the mosquitoes in this area are... Um, uh, less than before. Uh, they're no longer bothering you too much. There's just the, the occasional mosquito, but uh, nothing that requires extreme measures to keep them away. Um, the wind is uh, um, not blowing. You can't really feel it. Um, everything is uh, far more quiet than it was before. Partially because you're not hearing the bugs, but you're not even hearing uh, other animals. You're not hearing the wind. Uh, it... There's just the sound of your own footsteps, your your boots pushing through the mud and uh, moving leaves aside as you step through. Every once in a while you hear something, a branch falling in the distance. You stop. I charge my bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you check your, <clears throat> your little contraption. Nothing. You keep moving. Ah. Uh, it's quiet, and you you jump at every little noise, and you stop and check. There's this weird feeling, like, are you being watched? Are you being <gasps> followed? You look behind you every once in a while. You assign roles. You have a person checking the ground ahead of you, one person looking up, one checking your rear. Um, and uh, you actually come across another uh, trap that this one you spot ahead of time. Um, it's... Uh, the uh, the top of it, uh, um, the the camouflage that's been built on top of it has been uh, uh, perhaps the wind has moved it a little bit, uh, but you can actually see a wooden uh, a wooden plank just sticking out of the ground, and uh, from a distance you just toss a rock at it, then you push it down with a, with a stick, um, you see it just uh, uh, tilting downward. It's another spike. Uh, uh, and it's another pit of spikes, and this one is empty. Is there stuff on the spikes like last time? Yes. It seems dried up. I think Pip would want to, like, get Squeak down there to, like, scrape some of it up anyway. Um, and then Pip would put it in his herbalism kit pouch. Okay. Yeah, mark it down. The other trap was reset. This one hasn't been. Normally a hunter will make his rounds to his traps. It makes me think he might not have been here in some time. Can I try to guess? Uh, sure. compared, to, compared to the direction that the ape pointed you towards, uh, as you prioritize a little bit the higher terrain, you was slightly more to the west. We should have went more west? Uh, you are a bit more west compared to where it, uh, the the animal pointed. Uh, but you're not really off, off you're not really off track. Not by uh, much, I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um, and as you continue, um, you find another. This time, it hadn't uh, it hadn't been disturbed. Uh, it was still very well hidden. Uh, but uh, Casimir is the one who notices it, uh, um, as he just lifts his head for a moment and sniffs the air and uh, uh, holds up a hand in a in a halting motion. Uh, and he grabs a long stick and he touches the ground ahead of him, um, slowly, cautiously, until something snaps. Um, and he pushes the stick through, and there's these metal jaws that close, uh, that, that close around it. Uh, and he lets go of the stick that kind of just remains there, uh, just sticking out vertically from the ground. 
Uh, and he... He shakes his head. And then, as if nothing happened, he just keeps moving. Uh, Talix will go ahead and collect that. Does, does it look about like the one that Pip gave to Glimmer? Not the same? Um, not quite. This is made up of two separate parts that only work as long as they are set into this hole. So if you pull them out, they're 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 separated. They don't they don't lock up together. Like part of the mechanism is the hole itself. Hmm. It's a uh, far more um. I don't put it. It's a, it's a very makeshift uh, kind of trap, and it looks like this one would have only snagged your foot in. Okay. Uh, I'll take it anyway. Yeah, okay. Know. Yeah, what's well, basically scrap metal, um, but you, you could build it. Uh, you, you could build it to be functional. You just need a little bit of time and the proper tools. Make more metal brackets. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and this happens again. Um, and by the time uh, uh, you stop for lunch, uh, um, you, uh, uh, you're you starting to really feel paranoid. Anywhere, anywhere you go, there could be something trying to, um, trying to, uh, to take your foot away or something falling on you. Um, it's starting to get to your head, and it's really slowing down your progress. Um, so I'm going to need a constitution saving throw from everyone. Does it seem like the <laughs> traps are getting more frequent, too? Yes. <clears throat> oh, boy. Will, will, will. Oh, no. Oh, no. Everyone except Ontifex, and it includes Casimir, um, add a point of exhaustion to your sheet. Mm. Yeah. My speed is halved. <laughs> Pontifex was the one who was taken to the back, uh, so he was the one where, who was least concerned about where he was... Uh, uh, actually stepping, because it was always walking where somewhere had already been before. Uh, so he's... Um, he's just less affected by this. But your progress through the jungle, uh, uh, the jungle <laughs> is uh, being jungle. slowed down. <laughs> um, and it's not only going to start affecting your body, but also your mind. More traps loaded. We must be getting closer. They might already be watching. Do you, do you, do you guys hear any animals? I think they've all gone. It feels close. It always feels close, so what am I miss? Oh. As for the afternoon, I need everyone to roll a perception check. At disadvantage. Yep. For most of us. <clears throat> yep. distracted by you all failed. slowing down for no reason. <laughs> we die. Okay. Oh wait, Squeak! Uh, uh, oh. Squeak is our only hope. <laughs> Does he have... <laughs> I don't think he has a it. Uh, Squeak I need also to? needs a con save. Okay. The only one I don't need it from is Duchess. <clears throat> Can I make her make a uh, perception check? <laughs> um, yes. Okay, yeah, he's like something that would have a lot of force. Yeah. Duchess will save us. <laughs> <laughs> There's squeaks. Okay. Tied with me. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, as you push further through the jungle, uh, and you're finding trap after trap, some of them, um, you find that they have triggered and there is a dead animal inside. Uh, every once in a while you find uh, uh, a poor creature of the forest that happened to uh, get snagged into one of them. Um, most of them have been dead for uh, for long enough that uh, um, you wouldn't... Uh, uh, you smell them before you see them. Uh, and there comes Maybe some... this is a bad idea. There comes a moment when Duchess suddenly uh, veers up on her back uh, on her back legs and neighs loudly and turns around. Uh, Talus, roll a, an, an animal handling check. Purity twenty. Okay. Um. Duchess begins to sprint away from the party, and uh, uh, you don't want this to happen. Uh, she might end up running straight into a trap, so you... Uh... Oh yeah, disadvantage. Make that 11. <laughs> um... She might end up running straight into a trap, so you want to make sure that you're the one controlling her direction. Uh, but um, it's apparent that something spooked her. And the rest of you, as Talix takes off all of a sudden, uh, you have no idea what his horse might have seen or heard. Duchess! 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 Whoa! Whoa! There is something here. Something. <laughs> What'd you see, girl? <laughs> um, Duchess is already hundreds of feet away from you. Never uh, mind. <laughs> mind. <laughs> it makes horse sounds really loudly. Uh, um, as I don't, I'm not sure if this will work. If I cast Animal Friendship, can I calm her down at least? <clears throat> is Animal calm Friendship emotion? just... <laughs> uh, is animal friendship just one action? Yeah, let me read it. Action, so. uh, animal friendship. Uh, let's convince the beast that you mean it to no harm. Uh, um, um, it's a charming effect. We can roll for it, yes? Okay. Um, wisdom saving throw against your DC, which is 14, right? Yep. Okay. Um. Oh! She that... succeeds. Yeah, okay. I, I I, had rolled for it like a fool, but I, I am letting you roll for her things. I forgot. Um. Okay. No um. avail. <laughs> and... The... Duchess doesn't fear you. Um, in fact, you uh, while you currently don't have your, your spell um, active to actually understand uh, what she might be saying, you can feel like uh, the, uh, the way she, she is close to you. You feel like she might be trying to keep not just herself, but also you safe. Um... Mm. For a little while, uh, Talis, you're just unable to control her, and you're separated from the rest of the party. Um, mm -hmm. What are you doing? Your group. Should go after him, right? Yeah, don't get Take separated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then follow Talix. Okay, you're going to be running after the horse. Um... Of course, you, you can't really keep up with her speed. Uh, you're moving at the Pontifex pace. Uh, but... Uh, some of you could pull ahead, if you want. Pip has to stay with Pontifex. I've got Pip, go get Alex, it is fine. Okay. Um, I am fully I'm juiced. Ahead. 
Tekka, what can you do? I trip the horse. Well, I mean, he's he's fast. <laughs> I will run. There is no guarantee I could lose you. I think we should stick together. Try to see us. We... Ah, we should have left her outside. Probably. It is pretty dangerous to just run after her. Especially if she doesn't want to stop. Um, so you guys stay, stay close together as you chase in the general direction where Talix's uh, um, horse has gone. Um, and it takes you a while to catch up. Uh, basically, by the time that uh, um, that Duchess has calmed down enough that she slows down. Uh, a couple of minutes later, the rest of you catch up to her. Um, with Talix a little spooked, but uh, otherwise both he and the horse are unharmed, and so are the rest of you. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm off the horse now. I'm just, like, brushing her mane and mm. just trying to calm her down. Um, and uh, see, the the horse seems a little a little jumpy, but um, no longer terrified of whatever she has sensed. Yep, can you ask her what she saw? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> what what did you see, girl? Uh, I, I don't speak horse that good. <laughs> that was really good. I just laughed because you laughed. <laughs> uh, Pip. Uh, Duchess tells you that there were snakes. There, there were snakes? Oh. Should we take a different way then? Duchess says there were snakes. Maybe ask her if she'd like to stay behind. I think we were getting close, like you said. But... Would Duchess be okay if she stayed behind? Duchess makes it uh, very clear, uh, Pip. She really um, tries to make sure you understand that she's not scared. At all. <laughs> right. And she doesn't want the snakes to hurt Talix. Not scared, you're scared. They really caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of snakes either. Oh, Talix, can't you do like a... Like a... Divine channeling or something? <laughs> I could. Yeah, if I knew where they were. Well, Duchess, since you're not afraid, could you get us there? <laughs> uh, um, roll a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> it's a moment Duchess hears that. <clears throat> see her make the same face expression as on the picture. <laughs> Fuck! Ah, <laughs> uh, oh. the picture. Um, that just once more wants to make sure that you really understand that she is not scared at all. And it, so, you know, this decision is not motivated by fear, but she thinks that we, that we should really find another way around. Right. <laughs> Pip will relay this. <coughs> well, what do we all think? Then a different north. We must carry on. All right, all right. Still like to circle around to get to go in the same direction eventually, because I feel like we are going the right way. 
I oh. felt their glare. We were. Have we heard any animals now that we're in this place a little ways away? Uh, you can roll a perception check. <laughs> it hurts so much. Mm -hmm. The silence is so unnatural. Um, it's starting to get to you. Sometimes you, you think, is that a bird chirping in the distance? But then you listen more closely and you don't hear it again. Uh, did you just imagine it? Is it just really far away? Uh, perhaps one of those strange whistles again is trying to trick you. What if... What if we... What if we just left and burned the whole jungle down? <laughs> I think that would not be good to the purpose of why we're here. It is definitively flammable. Oh, it's pretty wet. I don't think it'd get that far. That sounds like a challenge. Let's not. Let's try to make this jungle safe again for the critters that live here. Yeah. Um, Duchess will be the one picking the direction to go, um, as she basically just takes a really uh, round, very circular path uh, uh, around the spot that she, uh, <laughs> where she got spooked before, insisting that this is the way to go. And you end up <laughs> going downhill a little bit, but then as you circle around the area, um, you're going up again. Um, this ended up wasting you some time. But, um, eventually you make camp and you haven't seen or heard any snakes anywhere. And you're actually wondering, maybe, uh, maybe the horse was just wrong. Mark down, uh, your rations. Your spell to create water for the day. And uh, we're just going to resume the normal turns for keeping watch tonight. Frog right. die. Hey, I am rolling a d30 today. To mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Pip like collapses to sleep as soon as we make camp. Okay. Lazy little shit. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I will be needing also a wisdom saving throw from everyone. Ooh. Um, a wisdom save? Yes, everyone except the horse. What's her deal? <laughs> Is she the cause of this? She's the one who stares. I'm pretty sure it can't take lower than that, but we still have disadvantage, right? No, not on saving throws. Uh, yeah, not oh. saves. Not that I need it. Oh no. Yeah, minus a four, by the way, not so thirteen. Oh, you have a you have a four? Yeah. Okay. So it's ten, four, fifteen, are. seven, four. Uh okay. Is there an easy way for you guys? Yeah, sure. Uh I'll need the three of you who have rolled beneath a ten to also roll a D one hundred. Oh. It's fine, you're fine. <laughs> D100, you said? Mm -hmm. So, like, two. Uh, how much damage uh, you take. Roll, roll 2d10. Well. Uh. 33. 10s first, then ones. Just okay. however it looks in the chat. 93! 59? Um, I don't. I don't need Pip to roll it. Uh, I said, uh, it's below it. Oh, below, below a, 10. a ten. Okay. Yes. Okay. So one at a time. Oh god. Starting from. Uh, starting from. Tekka. 
23. Okay. Uh, Tekka, the paranoia is really starting to get to you. Uh, this is unlike anything you've ever met before in your life. You um, never even knew about the concept of machines before those ravens started to, to show up. And this whole thing just feels so unnatural, making animals out of metal. Uh, and there's one right now that is uh, smart enough and, and evil enough to just fill this jungle with traps everywhere, with no regard of who falls into them, animal or person, doesn't matter. Um, it, it's hard to sleep tonight. Uh, um, you just keep hearing noises and you keep jumping up and, and looking around. Um, you swear that there is something watching you. Um, your extreme paranoia is going to translate as disadvantage on wisdom and charisma checks. Um, that will apply beyond your exhaustion if you heal from it. Got it. Okay. Oh, oh. Uh, next is Talix with a 33. Um, oh god, sorry, there's gonna be a lot of reading here. Um, okay. Alex, you have come to um, find that, you know what, the others were right. Duchess should not have come with you. She has uh, just uh, been a source of trouble. She has done nothing but slow you down. And you're pretty sure that she might just be plotting with the one who stares. Surely she must have tried to get you um, into a trap earlier or closer to him where it would have been easy to shoot down. You don't trust that horse. Uh, <laughs> You've seen that horse stare before. <laughs> um, for the time being, you regard uh, Duchess uh, with, uh, intense, uh, um, with intense paranoia. Um, and uh, no trust whatsoever. Brooke? 90. 93. Brooke, by the time uh, um, your watch starts and uh, um, Casimir is just doing a little bit of small talk with you, but you just don't really feel like talking to him for tonight. Uh, in fact, you just don't feel like talking at all. You just, you have to stay focused on your surroundings. You can't waste any of your energy speaking, uh, making noise, making yourself easy to find. No, 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 no. You must stay quiet. Um, you no longer have the, uh, the desire to speak. Uh, the following morning, for those of you who had a point of exhaustion, you can heal one from it. But the effects of madness uh, have taken root in your minds. And uh, what about Pontifex, who's made the save? I assume. I assume 15 made since I didn't have to roll yeah, 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 you, Pontifex is fine. Okay, okay. Barely saved. <laughs> um, based uh, on how far you've come, it feels like you might be reaching uh, uh, the highest point in the jungle. Um, at least as far as you can tell. You shouldn't be too far off. You might get there. Um, you should get there today, either this morning or this afternoon, depending on how things go. 
Um, Talix is now leading Duchess. He's not on her back. <clears throat> yeah, no longer riding her. Hey, we we haven't uh, checked in with Orm in a while. Well, here's it is true. Uh, must have been distracted, and also I am uh, just used my last of my rations, so might have to do some effective scavenging. You can eat some of Duchess's food. I've <laughs> 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 been carrying it along. That's so much. She eats so much all the time. <laughs> this is true. One could say she eats like a horse. I I wish I definitively am not. I appreciate the offer, but I... <laughs> horse feed is likely not a nutritious snore. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there. <coughs> her take her side. <laughs> uh, in this particular case, that is exactly what I am doing. Anyways. Um, if the rest of you are fine with keeping an eye out for food, you can just proceed a little slower for today. Um, but. What about the book? Oh, yeah, the book! Whoever has I was a thinking book. maybe we could use one of those inspiring tales that they always tell us. <laughs> oh no, hello? Oh, uh, hello? we hear we you. Hear you. <laughs> Do you hear us? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you dropped from TTS. <clears throat> um, you'd like to hear one of uh, one of Worm's tales? We might need it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, one of you can read uh, the the book out loud, but uh, uh, it is not going to be the person who's currently holding on to the book. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then you can always just like Go on, Brooke, what, what does it say? <laughs> <laughs> you can I narrate what your character is doing, book. of course, but Oh okay. <laughs> I think he will just take the book, hand it to Pontifex, <laughs> and let him do it. Pontifex Brooke silently hands you the book. Sure, I would uh, be happy to uh, orate his words. Okay. Well, and reading through the, through the book, you just uh, take a good ten minutes. Uh, um, and the since uh, uh, he is now part of your story, uh, Casimir and also Duchess uh, uh, can gain any temporary hit points, uh, um, which is two for everyone. Woo! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. Wait, we get a what? Sorry. Uh, two temporary hit points. Oh, two temp HP. Mm -hmm. Where do we put some down again? Um, on your mini or on the beyond? On my mini. Uh, I can just use right. the blue thing. If you, right? yeah, if you bring up the menu, uh, there is a hide bar three, so you can plop that up. Or you just uh, click on the button that says above max. Yeah, I'm just gonna increase oh, yeah, my that, HP above its max. Too. I mean, okay. by what? One? Oh, above max. Yeah, if you turn it on, then you can increase your HP above its max. You can increase anything oh, above its max. That's true. Hey. Okay. Uh, and I'll also take okay. a survival check from everyone. Survival! Um, I think most of you are no longer at disadvantage, but some still are. It still hey. is. Um, Tekka would roll a disadvantage because it's a wisdom check. <clears throat> I think. Is that what you got, uh, Sid? Yeah, disadvantage on wisdom and charisma, I think. Oh, he's muted. Okay. Uh...
Oh, no. Chat, come back. Here it is. Why is this red? Bless. It was blue before. <laughs> what? What's blue? What does it mean? What? It's still blue. It's still blue? I see red. <laughs> <laughs> uh, logging out and back in might have messed with its color. What sorcery is this? <laughs> and Casimir? Ooh, did I do it right? <laughs> okay. I accidentally... My, my, my fingers are really fat and I... <laughs> pressed a lot of buttons together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Sausage fingers. Um, as you progress uh, uh, through here, um, just moving slowly, both to keep an eye out for traps and also to, to forage. Um, Get your hands on everything edible that you can find. Um, during the day, you are able to find the equivalent of uh, two rations for each of you. And... Um, the jungle is becoming a little bit more sparse. Uh, the, there's more... There's more space between the trees. Uh, the the vegetation on the ground is becoming a little bit thicker, uh, but that's because more sunlight is shining through. Uh, the canopy is starting to open up, and you're beginning to be able to see much much further ahead of you. Um, and you come, you reach a point where the jungle ends. Uh, very dramatically uh, and you just peer a few feet ahead of you and you are standing uh, at the top of a sharp cliff uh, it's not it doesn't reach too far off uh, perhaps the bottom is uh, 40 or 50 feet away from you um, and the jungle continues at the bottom of that uh, but you have reached a beautiful just opening where you can see very far ahead of you um, this this sort of cliff continues to to your right and to your left and to your to your left in particular it, it curves um and uh, it, it curves forward and then back in and you can see uh, at the something at the very edge uh, of this cliff about a few hundred feet away from you but you spot it because uh it's shining uh you see light reflecting off of a metal surface um in from from the light is coming from multiple different little spots almost like you're looking at uh, uh, something complex uh, with multiple facets to it and it's moving um, and as you instinctively all just uh, take cover and uh, um, look in that direction um, you see something uh, made of metal big with uh, uh, the body of a mountain lion, the um, and then the torso of a humanoid, and then a feline head. Everything made of metal uh, and as big as Duchess is. It is currently um, lying down, and you can see it whittling at a at a piece of wood, occasionally stopping and. Uh, looking off into the distance, uh, down at the uh, at the opening directly ahead of it, and that's where we're gonna stop the session. Oh. <laughs> that's why the description was so confused. It's not just <laughs> the top half of a man; it's like a man sandwich on cat bread. <laughs> yeah, yeah, precisely. <laughs> Has someone looking at Winter's notes? <laughs> <laughs> Man sandwich on cat bread. Thank you for yeah. that. Yeah, that's that's exactly how she has it written down. <laughs>